Hey guys, Chef here with Ghost Night Gaming, and welcome to our first episode from console to screen. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to checking out this review, because today we are going to be taking a look at the 1995 release of Mortal Kombat. One of the earlier video game movies out there, and probably one of the ones that got the best reception overall. Thanks, Shang Tsung. Really, I'm ready. I, I've got this. Round one. Fight. Oh, seriously, guys, I've got this. Okay, let's get this review started. So, first thing we're going to take a look at, the story. So, looking at the story from Mortal Kombat, it actually does a very good job of following a very concise and clear story. It follows quite, quite well the actual original plot behind Mortal Kombat 1 and some of the plot behind Mortal Kombat 2. So it's got points in its favor there that was very recognizable to fans of the franchise already. Now, in addition to that, the story itself was fairly easy to follow and fairly easy to keep uh, track of, of what was going on. Even if you weren't necessarily familiar with the uh, video game franchise at this point, you could definitely follow along with the movie and be able to enjoy and get to know each of the characters, their quirks, and a bit of their personalities. A big uh, disadvantage I think that the movie had is that certain sections where they were getting into uh, some of the minor character fights and stuff like that was very rushed, uh, a little montages in places that it kind of didn't really feel natural. And there are certain other uh, places where the pacing is a little bit weird, uh, focusing really heavily on the decently choreo uh, choreographed fights, but then kind of rushing into the next section. Well, it was easy to understand, it did feel a little rushed. But, to be fair, they were trying to cram a lot into about an hour and a half of the movie. Plus trying to also still be able to kind of introduce everybody that is involved in the plot in such a way that they weren't uh, completely just, who is this guy and what is he doing here? So as a whole, they did fairly well. So, our rank for story is A. Very clear story, a little rushed, and as a whole, was able to introduce the characters well. All right, now on to our second part, the costuming. So as a whole, the costuming was fairly on point. Uh, you look at a lot of the outfits, and you can really go back, for the most part, and go, that was Scorpion. That was Sub-Zero. Yeah, that's Liu Kang. Yeah, that's definitely Johnny Cage. There was a little bit uh, less of that with Kitana and... Uh, Sony Blade, but at the same time, you can kind of understand with the movie not quite wanting to uh, go quite the same route. Uh, even Kano is really well done. You know, his cybernetic eye is perfect. Uh, it actually looks really good. Uh, Goro looks right, though we'll get into him later because he's more of a visual effect thing. Now, Shang Tsung is a little bit different. If anybody recalls the original Mortal Kombat, uh, he's actually an old man. In that one with a big Fu Manchu and the whole uh, nine yards. But he looks a little bit more like his later incarnation, so Mortal Kombat 3, for example, where he looks considerably younger because of the souls he's absorbed or anything like that. So, not too bad as a whole. So, looking at the costuming, looking at the uh, how recognizable the characters are because the outfits are pretty, pretty accurate, we're going to give the costuming a... A. Alright, next up is our visual effects. So, looking at this now, this is 2020 now, it is 25 years since Mortal Kombat was originally released. And to be fair, a lot of the CG effects are extremely dated by today's standards. Now, taking into account this was released in 1995, this was actually really well done. There were a couple of points that were a little weird. Uh, I mean, there were weird things about Reptile, and of course, there were still uh, slight problems if you watch, uh, for example, uh, Reptile and Liu Kang's fight near the end of the movie. There's some interactions that are a little, a little weird because of the trying to interact with a CG uh, character. But other than that, you know, when you get into the actual physical effects, so the fight choreography, it was done by Robin Cho. He was the lead fight coordinator. And you can definitely tell his experience 
through the fight choreography because it's all fairly well done. It's really good for a 90s action martial arts film. So even if you're not a Mortal Kombat fan, but you're a fan of martial arts movies, you're going to enjoy the martial arts uh, just by themselves, and it's very well done. Goro is both really good and very dated by today's standards. Uh, they did a really good job with his uh, puppeteering and his motion. Uh, for the most part, it does feel at certain times it's a little weird, but it's kind of a Muppet-style weird. Nothing that's really... You know, it's really hard to get a really giant four-armed man and get him looking right with how the limbs would move. But I'd say they did a pretty good job for it. Sometimes it uh, tends to fall a little bit flat during some of the fight scenes, but as a whole, he largely moves the way he should, and he feels pretty good for, you know, an attempt at making this very supernatural creature. So all in all, we are going to mark the special effects at rank B. The effects are dated, but they're effective, and the martial arts more than make up for any of the dating of the CG effects. All right, accuracies of the source material. So this one is a bit of an interesting one, because once again, as we mentioned during the story section, this actually combines the, the base plot of Mortal Kombat 1 while also introducing elements of Mortal Kombat 2. Because Mortal Kombat 2 starts when uh, Sony Blade is kidnapped by Shao Kahn, or uh, sorry, Shao Kahn because of Shang Tsung, and brought to Outworld, and they go into Outworld to uh, rescue her. There's certain characters that are introduced in this particular movie that, once again, only really appear from Mortal Kombat 2 on. Both Kitana and Jax are characters that do not appear in the first game. Some things get a little bit weird, like uh, the, the whole Scorpion and Sub-Zero's uh, subplot is kind of just completely forgotten. And the elements in, in the movie that are like a lot of movies that are adaptations of other, uh, other media is we had a lot of characters die that didn't die in die or uh, get dealt with in the first game or even in the second game and have been kind of carrying on. Yes, Sub-Zero does die in the first game, but he dies at the hands of the Scorpion, not Liu Kang. So certain elements, while it makes sense for the sake of the story context of the movie, it doesn't make sense in the universe canon context of the Mortal Kombat franchise. But other than that, the characters are pretty on point. Raiden gets a little weird, but I think it's part of how Christopher Lambert plays him that may affect uh, Raiden's uh, bearing. But most of the rest of the characters, like, you look at these guys and it's like, yeah, that looks like and acts like and feels like Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade, Liu Kang. You know, even, you know, adding little bits of having Ed Boon reprising as the voice of Scorpion for all of his sound bites during his fight, that's pretty much right on the source. Uh, costuming is right on to the source. You know, locations, you know, we see a lot of these locations in later games or in the earlier games. So as a whole, their attention to source material is really well done. So we're going to rank this one at an A. There are some things that are weird, but as a whole, they are really on point. Everybody seems to act like the way they should, interacts the way they should. There's no random plot or character development other than the Scorpion and Sub-Zero thing that really makes them not feel like the character they are. Even with the change to Shang Tsung's appearance compared to Mortal Kombat 1, he's still Shang Tsung. And I guess there's one weird thing about that, and that's his obsession with uh, Sonya Blade, but we're not going to get into that. Finally, fun. Is this movie fun? And you know what? A resounding yes. This is by far probably one of the most celebrated video game movie out there. Whenever we, you hear a discussion about video game movies, we are always talking about Mortal Kombat, especially for uh, anybody from uh, that was uh, watching tons of movies in the 90s. Mortal Kombat was the best video game movie at the time. Absolutely the best uh, compared to everything else. It was more accurate. It was fun to watch. The characters were interesting. 
the action was good. The soundtrack is amazing. If you have not listened to this entire soundtrack by itself, go listen to this entire soundtrack by itself. It more than makes up for the film. I mean, the Mortal Kombat uh, theme that comes out of this movie is more well-known than any Mortal Kombat theme music for the game. And everybody immediately associates this music with the game. <laughs> so, but, you know, the fun little quips, the entertaining moments, like Johnny Cage is right spot on. He's played really well. But everything from the ground up just is so much fun to enjoy. You cannot go wrong checking out Mortal Kombat. So, as a whole, this one gets a glorious rank S for just being a really fun and great video game ad adaptation. All right, so we've ranked each of the five categories, and now it's time to find out Mortal Kombat's final score. Rank A. As a whole, it's a glorious and faithful adaptation. It is fun to watch. It is a stellar soundtrack. It's only a little bit weird. It's the special effects are a little bit dated, but the martial arts choreography is excellent. It's definitely a movie, if you haven't seen the original Mortal Kombat movie, you need to go give it a try. Go check it out, and I assure you, if you are a Mortal Kombat fan, you are going to have a, a ton of fun with this one. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed checking out this review. Sorry it's a little chaotic. This It's been a while since I've done any movie reviews. Hopefully you enjoyed checking this out. Hopefully it's... Uh, is a movie that you really enjoyed. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the movie and what you think of some of the movies that are coming because we've got a couple of big announcements and we've got a few animated ones that I need to hunt down and check out. Other than that, we will be back again soon with another movie review and we'll also be back with more video content. We've got top tens, we've got game guides, and more here on Ghost Night Gaming. In addition, you can check me out on Twitch, where I play everything under the sun as far as games go. You know, we try a lot of different stuff. We do cosplay crafting and more as well. And check out the Discord and my other social media if you want to uh, get in touch with me more and talk movies, talk video games, talk cosplay, whatever it is. Let's talk. Have fun. Keep gaming, and I will see all of you again next time. Excellent.